So this summer, I learned two things, that I suck at Monopoly and that my younger brother, Jonathan, is going to rule the world one day. I learned both of these things as, as we were playing what was supposed to be a friendly game of Monopoly in Edgartown, Massachusetts, and I watched my research unfold in this moment, and it was so bizarre. But this wasn't just any Monopoly game. This was blood sport. It almost ended my mom's engagement and drove two people mad. <laughs> and as the game gets going, we're all buying property as, as we go on, creating strategy along the way. And we realize that Jonathan hasn't purchased anything. But about 20 minutes in and several times around the board, Jonathan buys Atlantic Avenue. And I think to myself, maybe he's just bored and being 16 and uninterested, but he wasn't. Jonathan had a strategy. And next thing we know, Jonathan controls 80% of all the money in play, 70% of all the property. People are making deals to try to get Jonathan, to try to avoid Jonathan's property. My mom's trying to make a deal with her fiance. Her fiance's making a deal with someone else. All the deals go south and Jonathan still runs everything. And to me, I'm going crazy because this looks eerily familiar. This looks like my research. I watch as people are trying to lose, trying to maintain their property and they don't have the money to afford it anymore. I watch as a doctor is negotiating with a 16 year old because she has three pieces of property and $16. And when the bank no longer has cash to mortgage properties, they go to Jonathan. In Eggertown, this was a game, but in Detroit, this was reality. Far too many people have gone through and tried to maintain in a struggling city, in a struggling bankrupt city, to maintain when the city should have understood that people are the lifeblood of the institution, not the markets. Because when the markets leave, they often break the institution in their wake. And so this is what I study. I study both the institution and the people. And I study how the institution and the people are, are supposed to be able to work together. And I'm able to study how people are negotiating for their fundamental human, social, and civil rights, and how the institution is supposed to be able to include these people that built this city into the future of this city. And while I study for the situation, Detroit, Flint, Benton Harbor, Allen Park, and all the other cities that have undergone emergency management, I broadly study what happens in the face of economic crisis to both the institution and to the people. And I watched the, I was told, by a former Big Three representative that when elephants fight, ants get trampled. And I watched this. I watched as Detroit, as Detroit large businesses pushed out small businesses that, that stayed in the city even after the automotive plants left. But this is just business, right? Large businesses bring in big money, more businesses and tourism. And that's what we want. Lively downtowns and broken communities, balanced budgets, balanced budgets and homeless citizens. Detroit went through a bankruptcy, and as they're going through their, their bankruptcy, people, the investors that leveraged the crisis are thriving. But as I watch my brother take both Boardwalk and Park Place from my cousin because she landed on his now prized Atlantic Avenue with a hotel and owed him $1,150, I was reminded of the moment where the appraisers walked into the Detroit Institute of Art and say that the art was worth upwards of $4 billion, but they would only get $1 billion at auction. The value of an institution and the sanctity of the culture didn't matter because the city was in crisis. And I'm always reminded when I do this that nothing is sacred in times of crisis. Everything about this game rem reminded me that the work that I do matters. It reminded me that the deals are going to happen. The market is, is not going anywhere, it's going to stay. But the slow demise of the players matters. When you have no money and no hope and you're begging to go to jail instead of landing on Atlantic Avenue, there's an institutional problem. And I'm not saying the people in Detroit are begging to go to jail, but I am saying that they are begging for some sort of reprieve. Reprieve from outrageous water bills, reprieve from failure, failed school districts, or from just having to pay taxes on, on a property that they're not getting services on. The people don't want to play anymore. The people can't afford to play anymore. Because when we quantify an institution, either through bankruptcy or financial restructuring, we also quantify the people within it. And by the end of the night, nobody wants to play Monopoly with Jonathan anymore. And so we either, so we, because the game isn't fun when you can't win. So we need to find a way to win again. And so we, the people, understand that we make up the markets and we need to either make up a new game or a new set of rules. Thank you.